الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لايلاف قريش ايلافهم رحله الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي اطعمهم من جوع وامنهم من خوف صدق الله العظيم all praises are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank him for his guidance his protection we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for keeping us safe we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for security we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings and favors and bounties that he has bestowed upon us i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the quran about quraish in their covenants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran for the covenants of security and safeguard enjoyed by Quraysh their covenants covering their journeys by winter and summer let them adore the lord of this house allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about how quraish they used to take their caravan from one place to another and they enjoyed security they enjoyed safety and so allah is reminding us that they were told to adore and to keep in close connection with the lord of the house the lord of the kaaba because they were very privileged they were honored to be close to that house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah provided for them food against hunger and he granted them security against the fear of danger they were prestigious because of their connection with the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah has honored us as the children of Adam 
Allah has given us prestige and honor because of our faith, because of our Iman, because of our connection, because of our commitment to our Lord. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that prestige and honor, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes you for what you have done, Allah brings resources. He grants you sustenance, He grants you security, He grants you safety. And so the more we want to be secured, the more we, need, we want to be safe, the more we want to be protected, we need to make sure that we are fully committed in our faith with regards to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many places in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about khawf, fear. He talks about sadness, grief, and, and fear and sadness comes when you are not comfortable, when you don't have peace of mind, when you're not safe, when you feel that you are not secured. There is an essence of fear in you. And when fear comes, you start to grieve. And so people start to get uncomfortable, sick, stressed out. There are so many right now, maybe, who have the election syndrome disorder, or as they say, ESD, right? Election syndrome disorder. This is a new term that they're using. And people are not very comfortable. People are not very... Uh, they're not, they don't have that peace of mind if they feel that anything can blow up at any time, that there can be violence. And their, their, their safety would be compromised, would not be able to walk the way that they would walk without having to look right and left and front and at the back fearing that someone would do something to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, Ya Bani Adam, Imma yatiyannakum rusulum minkum yaqussuna alaykum ayati faman ittaqa وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Bani Adam, that you will have messengers who would come and they re would rehearse unto you our stories. They will talk about our signs. They would remind you about the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, if you take it seriously, if you have piety, righteousness, if you are God-fearing, you have made mistakes, but you try to make sure that you correct those mistakes, you purify yourselves, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ There would be no fear and you would have no grief. And so it doesn't matter what happens around us. Whatever we are being faced with, so long as we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we grow our faith, our iman, as the, the signs of Allah are being rehearsed unto us, Allah says that you, you don't have to fear anything. And you should not have any grief. He, he tells us in the Quran about the increase on, in this faith. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Verily, the believers are those when the signs of Allah are being rehearsed unto them they feel a tremble in their hearts. They, 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 they have that fear. They do not want to commit anything that is wrong. They do not want to transgress the boundaries or the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being rehearsed unto them, their faith increases, they do not become stagnant. They, they are not at the same level all the time in terms of their Iman. The more and more they hear about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more and more they are being reminded about their duties and responsibilities, the more and more they are being reminded about life after this life faith becomes stronger faith increases and the believers are those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they rely that reliance is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and my dear Sisters, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made dua with regards to the beautiful, blessed city of Mecca. And one of the first things that he asked for What was it for, us, for it to be a safe, secure city? Safety, security. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ اجْعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ He prayed and he didn't ask for, for sustenance. First thing he asked for, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ And if an, an Ibrahim, he said his prayers, Rabbi Jal Hadha Baladan Amina. Make this a secure city, a safe place. Because if you're safe, everything else 
falls into place. If you're safe, you will have that peace of mind, that tranquility. And then he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ and provide its people with fruits. Whomever of them believes in Allah on the last day. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant them sustenance. Those who believe in Allah on the final day. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he talks about that safety and what it brings you. He says, "Man asbah minkum muafan fi jasadihi amid aminan fi sirbihi indahu kutu yawmihi fakannama hizat lahu ad dunya." The Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever among you wakes up physically healthy, you get up in the morning and you're healthy, you're feeling safe, that everything around you would be okay, they would, no, they would come no harm to you, you don't think that people will viol violate your rights, you don't think people will invade your privacy? You don't think that there will be any violence? And you feel that safety both inwardly and outwardly? You're feeling secure. And you have food for the day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, it is as if you have acquired the whole world. You wake up in the morning and you are physically healthy. You are feeling safe and secure. And there is food, there is sustenance for your day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it is as if you have acquired the entire world. I imagine yourself in such a position. You are feeling on top of the world because of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is not only with regards to safety for ourselves, security for ourselves, but we need to do everything that would bring safety and security to other people. You know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us that we ought to live upon this principle. That you are not a true believer. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you is a true believer until and unless you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. Sometimes we tend to limit this to our Muslim brother. But we are all brethren in humanity. We need to look out for other people even though they do not share the same faith like us. Or they do not share the same faith with us. Whatever we believe in, they do not believe. 
But whatever, whatever we like for ourselves, we should like it for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so just as how we want to be safe, and we want security, we want it for everyone else. We help to protect our neighbors. We help to make sure that everyone that we come in contact with, that we bring the same peace of mind and tranquility and safety to them. And we do nothing that will cause harm unto other people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man ista'adhakum billah fa'idhuhu wa man sa'alakum billah fa'atuhu Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever seeks refuge with you in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him refuge whoever comes to you and they are looking for safety and they are looking for security grant them and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said whoever Ask you in the name of Allah, give it to them or give it to the person, give it to that person who asks you. Try to help in whatever, whatever way you can. Remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi wal-muhajiru man hajara man naha man naha allahu anhu A Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hands the Muslims are safe. You know, we, we hear a lot of about don't say this and don't say that. Make sure that you don't say bad things about your brothers and sisters. Quite often, it's about the tongue. Here, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it should not come from your tongue nor from any limbs of your body. He mentions the hands. So don't harm. Don't, don't bring harm to other people. Make sure that you protect them. Make sure that when they are around you, they can feel safe. And even if they're away from you, they can feel safe that they would know that you would not speak ill of them. And you would not in any way incite violence against them. Or in any way ask people to harm them. And then the Prophet ﷺ talks about the immigrant, the muhajir, and he says that the muhajir or the immigrant is the one who refrains from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. You know, we talk about migration, moving from one place to another. That's the term used in, in, in the hadith for a, a person moving from one place to a muhajir. We, we, we look at the muhajirun, the ones who migrated from Mecca to Medina. But look at what they migrated from and what they migrated to. They migrated from persecution. 
they migrated from insecurity. They migrated from a place that they were not safe. They were not able to worship their Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a safe way. And they migrated to a place in which they were comfortable. There was a, a, a pledge, a covenant between them and the Ansar that they would be protected and they would have safety and there would be security for them and so they would be able to worship their Creator. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the immigrant is not the one who just migrates from a place to another place, but he is one who leaves off. He is one who refrains from everything that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has forbidden, Allah has made unlawful. My dear brothers, in my dear sisters, every time people transgress, every time people move away from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time people lose his faith and they do not abide by the rules and set by their Creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He puts them in that state of fear and anxiety He puts them in that state in which they, they do not feel safe anymore Allah talks about the parable of a city He says in the Quran وَدَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّ يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا رَغَدًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقُهَا اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْجُوءِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Allah sets forth a parable of a city enjoying security and quietness, safety. Enjoying it while being abundantly supplied with the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sustenance was coming from every place every corner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and if you fear Allah يَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ He will grant you sustenance from places that you never even expected and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran that he about this city it was enjoying everything abundantly given sustenance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming from every place yet it was ungrateful for the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah made it taste of hunger and Allah made it taste fear terror and Allah says he made it he made them taste it in the extreme and the, and the way it is being used in the Quran libas Look at your clothing. Sometimes you can't even get out of them in, in, in a way that is very comfortable. 
Sometimes it's very difficult for you to remove them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about the extreme, He's saying that they, they, they were made to taste it, this terror, this unsafety, uh, environment and hunger in the extreme. Why? Because of the evil that they committed. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to be very careful and do not uh, at any time You know, forget about the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Have faith, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always recognize these bounties and favors of Allah. La in shakkartum la azidan nakum. If you are thankful, I will certainly increase you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah have mercy upon us. May Allah give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was Salatu was Salam, Walla Sayyidina Muhammad, Walla Alihi was Habihi Ajmain, Ridwanullahi Alayhim Layomidin, Amma Bad. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about His help in how it comes. And sometimes it comes in ways that we think that are very insignificant. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil fil. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil. Tarmihim bi hijaratim min sijil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says have you not seen what your Lord did with the owners of the elephant Allah sent birds you see the birds flying all over. It, it, you know, sometimes you think that they are so insignificant. What can they do? These birds came with stones, pebbles, and destroyed the mighty army of elephants. That's the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when the leader of Quraysh was asked about the Kaaba and protecting it from Abraha and his army of elephants, he said, he said that's the, the house of the Lord and he will protect it from any type of invasion from any type of insecurity he will protect it he will keep it safe and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected it and kept it safe from abraha in his mighty army of elephants so always put your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever there are challenges and difficulties turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times if Allah grants you that 
safety, if Allah grants you security, then you will have no fear, you will have no grief. Your life would be comfortable, it will be a peaceful life, one of a life of tranquility, a life of happiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe. May Allah protect us. May Allah give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونسيت الباقين البشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هم إلا فرجت ولا هاجة من حواجئ الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا دينا إلا قديت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض وكم لا لكم تذكرون فذكر الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة